Hey, it's Taylor, and today I want to show you some of the new Windows deployment features in the new versions of Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows 7. To do this, we're going to need a Windows Server 2008 R2 server in an Active Directory environment, and a Windows 7 machine that we're going to use to create some of our tools, and we're going to need a Windows 7 machine that we're going to take an image of, as well as a Windows AIK, which I put a link in the description. Once you have all of these things, we're going to start by preparing your source machine that you're going to take an image of and deploy onto clients. So basically, so you just install Windows 7 and then get it exactly how you like it. Customize all of your settings and install all of the software and updates and everything that you need to deploy onto clients because this will be the image that we're going to, um, we're basically going to copy and we're going to deploy over the network. Once you've done that, we're going to come back to your machine and I'm going to assume that you've installed the AIK, so if you haven't, just install the AIK on your system here, and I've installed it. So now we're going to build the tools that we need to image that machine that we had just created. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to open a command prompt as administrator. And then we're going to run some commands. And I can put these in the description if you would like, if that would make it easier. But basically, we're just going to take the files from the Windows AIK folder, and we're going to make a source and we're going to condense that into an ISO and that's going to allow us to boot into like a pre-installation environment and it's going to allow us to take an image of the machine we created and we're going to save that onto the deployment server. So the first command we're going to do, or the first thing we're going to do is change to the um, AIK folder. Alright, and we're, we're in the AIK folder. And then I'm going to copy the PE file. So copy. I'm going to make a new folder on my C drive called WinP. All right, so this is copying everything that we need to make the PE disk onto my C drive. OK, and now we're going to do imagex slash mount rewritable rw c colon winpe winpe.wim 1 c colon winpe mount. And then that's going to mount that, and it's going to create and mount an image for us. Once we've done that, we need to copy this program into the mount folder so it will be saved into our ISO. So we're going to copy imagex.exe from C program files, so C program files, Windows AIK, tools, x86, what? in imagex.exe. We're going to copy that to WinPE mount mount Windows System32. Save it in there. Alright, now once that's done, we're going to create this in here. So we're going to exclude the things that we don't need from our image that we're going to take of this machine. So we're going to open a notepad as administrator and we're going to add, we're going to create an exclusion list. I can also put this in the description if you'd like. So now that I've created that, I'm going to save it as We're going to save it with this file name and this path. Now we're going to go back to our command prompt and we're going to unmount our image and we're going to generate our ISO file. So we're going to run imagex unmount commit and now it's unmounting our image and so once that's finished, we're going to have to copy our image file to our ISO sources folder. So WinPE ISO sources.
Alright, so let's copy that to our ISO sources file. Now we're going to actually generate our ISO file. So we're going to run osc dimg n h bc colon backslash winpe etfsboot.com c colon winpe ISO and then we're going to do a space and we're going to type c colon winpe ISO ISO or when we'll call it winpe.iso and that's going to generate our ISO image once we've created that ISO file that's what we're going to use to boot that Windows 7 machine that we created earlier off of and copy the contents of the, of the hard disk into an image and store it on the deployment server so now that we've got our ISO built we're going to go and we're going to prepare our server that we're going to use to deploy machines so I have my Windows Server 2008 R2 server right here so I'm going to log in Okay, so this computer right now I have is, this is a domain controller, but you're, it doesn't have to be a domain controller. So all we're going to do right now is we're going to install the services that we need to deploy the machines, and we're going to go ahead and configure them. So if I get, so I'm getting server manager up. Now I'm going to install the role for deployment services. I'm also going to install a DHCP server on this machine since I don't have a DHCP server on this network. Um, you may or may not have a DHCP server. If you don't have one, then you can install one on this server. If you do have one already, then you're going to have to configure it. And I'll configure this one so that you can see how to do it. Um, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to create a scope for my network. We're just going to go through and finish configuring this. We're going to install these roles. Okay, so that's done. So now if we go into roles, we can see I have my DHCP server and my Windows deployment server listed. And this will show that this is not configured, but I'm going to go check on my DHCP server before I do that. So now that I have that my DHCP server set. I'm going to go and configure my deployment server. So we're going to go over here on the left in server manager and we're going to go to the deployment services tab and we're going to go to servers and we're going to pick our server and then I'm going to go to more actions and I'm going to configure my server and then this is saying that you have to re meet the requirements and you have to be a member of an active directory domain. You have to have a DHCP server on the network which I do I just created and there has to be an active DNS server. This machine's also a DNS server and the server has to have an NTFS partition to store images on which it does. So I'm going to click next. And then this is going to be where you're going to store all of your images and your boot files and your configuration files and everything for deployment services. So I'm just going to keep mine on the same drive. You can put yours wherever you'd like. I'm going to click next. And this is telling me that I should put it on a separate drive, but this server doesn't have a separate drive, so I'm just going to click yes. Um, DHCP options. Um, it depends whether you have a Microsoft versus a non-Microsoft, and if it's on the machine, and if it's not on the machine, that's um, something different. I can put that in the description if you would like. But um, if it's running on the same machine, I have my Microsoft DHCP server running on the same machine. I'm going to check both boxes. Click Next. And this is the security settings. And it says don't respond to any client. Respond only to known clients. I'm just going to respond to all clients. Security is not really an issue for my test environment. But to comply with your organization's policies and everything, you might have to change that. I don't know. So I'm going to click Next. And now that's finished, it's going to want me to add my images to the server, so I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to click Finish. And now it's, it wants the path to my images, so we're just going to give it the stock, like the Windows 7, the images off the Windows 7 DVD. So I have the Windows 7 DVD here, so I'm going to... So you would put in the Windows 7 DVD into your server. But I'm just going to mount it onto the server. So it's going to... Alright, so it thinks it's in the DVD, so I'm going to click Next. And then it's going to create an image group. Click Next. And now it's adding the images.